Okay, welcome everyone to our lab session for writing Wikipedia articles. This is, what are we in, week four. And uh, today I'm joining you from the Wikimedia Foundation offices. I'm, uh, I had to be in San Francisco, so I was able to get a room here. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't able to grab anyone to come in and join us today, but um, I guess it's, it's fun to be here anyway. And um, so I am hoping that you are all hard at work on your final projects and uh, digging in a little more deeply with the specific Wikipedia article you've chosen to work on. Uh, and I hope that some of you have some comments on what you've done so far or some questions that have come up. Uh, we'd be very happy to look at anything that's on your mind. I have a, a couple of ideas of things that I can show to you if you don't, but um, but first, I mean, we've got a pretty small group today, so maybe we could just go through in order and uh, and see what people are working on. Clem, do you have anything you could... Well, I see EJ has a question, so why don't we start with you, EJ, and we can just circle through. And uh, feel free to use the microphone if you prefer. It's, if you want to use the chat window, that's fine. But uh, microphone's good too. Okay, I'm going to pull that up. Share my browser. So there's a footnote that you want as an external link. Okay. Okay. So um, I think what you're referring to is this the one in brackets, and you'd like that to show up in the references section, is that, is that correct? Okay. Um, so uh, you, don't, you don't need to use the talk page for something like this, for adding a, a reference. Um, oh, okay, somebody else already added to it. So let's look at the history and see what has happened here. So, oh, I see, Grandma Lori. So, uh, so it looks like oh so your your team has maybe been working on this article is that is that right EJ? I'm seeing several familiar names in here. Okay, so uh, so let's let's just click on edit source here and see if we can find where that's coming from. So I think what we're seeing is this right here. So the flowers of this species are creamy white with burgundy markings, and then at the end of that sentence is this link. So um, the simple way to make it appear as a reference is I'm going to show you, th there are three pieces of code that I'm going to put in. So the first is um, just the tag ref in angled brackets. The second is a, a similar, a closing uh, tag, so uh, slash ref. And then the third piece that you need is to have it, in the references section, you need this template, which is ref list. So the, the two squiggly brackets basically pull something in from the template namespace. Um, so that is, uh, that's, that's going to pull in, I'll just type in here so you can see the, the template that it refers to. So this, th this is where it lives on Wikipedia. Um, but by putting it in squiggly brackets, it's actually going to pull that in as opposed to making a link out to it. So uh, this part is not necessary, but I'm going to leave that in when I do a preview so that you can see the difference. So I'm going to click on Show Preview. And now we see that there's a footnote. up here, 
that, that little one bracket. And that links down, you can even see when I hover over it, it's highlighting the reference down here. And so the, the ref list template basically pulled in the code that causes it to appear like a footnote. But then after that, I put in just the, the link template colon ref list, and that just made a link to it. So I'm gonna um, I'm gonna go to, I'm gonna delete that part which I only put in as a demonstration, and let's uh, and I'll put in an edit summary. Oops. Okay. And I'll click save page. So. That, so we've we've gone we've gone part way there. We've we have uh, we've turned this into a footnote that's down below, but the footnote is not formatted in any nice way. So we can we can look at how to do that as well. Uh, I'm just going to catch up on the chat window. Okay. Um, so is there anyone else? What is there anyone else who can help us uh, develop this into a, a more nicely formatted reference? Um, I, I think. I'm probably not the only one on the call here who knows how to do that, so maybe someone else can jump in and uh, and demonstrate the next step. Is there anyone who's figured this out along the way? Peter, you, you showed me a, a different way of doing footnotes that I, I found a little easier. I mean, um, references. Okay. But why don't you why don't you, why don't show you us finish that? the one you're, you started though? Okay. Uh, so so yeah, I'll I'll finish showing you this way, and then Sarah can show you an easier way. Um, so what I want to do now is I've I've got this kind of ugly looking footnote. All it's 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 just a a link inside of a bracket, and so I, I actually Sarah, I think I'm going to end up showing what you were talking about. Um, but I can't, so if I try to just edit this section, I'm not going to see the code that I need to. I'm, all I'm going to see is that little template that I put in, the ref list template. And that's because the, the contents of what goes into the footnote still lives up here in the code. It still lives where the footnote exists in the main text. So I actually have to edit the main section to, um, oops, to edit what, uh, what goes into the text. So it's still going to be everything that goes between these two ref tags. Uh, as it is, we've got these double brackets and then the URL. So uh, the first thing that we can notice is that the um, there's an extra bracket here. So you see how there's a black bracket and then a blue bracket for the link? That's because an external link only requires single brackets, not double brackets. So let's First, just remove that, and we'll do another preview. So now we see it looks a little bit better. We only we don't have that extra set of brackets. But now, what if we wanted that to have the title of the page that it's going to? I'm going to uh, I'm going to click on this. I'm going to use the command key. I'm, I'm using a Mac, so, or I'm going to command click, which will open it in a separate tab. Or if you're on a PC control click. Uh, and so now we have the actual link here on another page. And so it's called it's called the name of the page is Glyph. So I'm going to just copy that. I'm going to make that the title of the link. I'm going to go back to our Wikipedia page. And for an external link, the way that I will do that is still within the, the brackets. I'm going to leave the URL as it is, and then I'm going to put a space and I'm going to paste that word glyph for the title. And I'll do show preview again. And now you're going to see that instead of a one between, uh, between the brackets, you're going to see the word glyph. So that's the, the title of the page that we're linking to. Now it would be good to give this a more thorough citation. So we would probably want to put uh, that the publisher is this site whatis.com. Uh, I don't know if there's a date on this. I don't think there is a date. Uh, but we can give it an access date, so we can we can say what date we accessed this on. Um, but I think, Sarah, if you if what you're going to show is what I'm thinking it is, I think I'm going to break and let you um, demonstrate that. Is that all right? 
Sure, except I don't think I've done it since you showed it to me. Also, uh, I can, yeah, can, can I just guide you through what you showed me? So I don't have to take the screen? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, and I, yeah, and EJ, okay, yes, I, I absolutely can. And, uh, and EJ is asking uh, about the footnote form, and I think that is what we're about to show. Yes. Yeah, that's what I was thinking about, too. So why don't I just, uh, since I'm controlling the screen and everything, I think, why don't I, I just think that's a good idea. And for me, it's like I found all of this reference list stuff really confusing okay. until Pete showed me this trick, and now I, yeah. I only use this trick. <laughs> Excellent. So, so this is a trick that's uh, that's very useful for adding a reference to begin with, but it doesn't really help a whole lot when what you want to do is um, is fix a reference that's already there. So that's that's why I'm showing you sort of what's under the surface here. Um, it's, it's kind of good to know both. But let's just, um, I'm going to copy this URL so that I can paste it later. And now I'm going to just delete everything that's in there. And we're going to start fresh. So, and I'm going to just pull this up. I'm gonna, there's an extra space there. And actually, when we do footnotes on Wikipedia, uh, we, uh, according to the manual of style, we should be putting them after the, the punctuation, so I'm, I've just gone to the right of the period. So I have, so it's important to note that, that we've put that ref list bit in there. Uh, that part needs to be done even with this trick. But once you have that, if you position the, the cursor within the text, now you can choose out of this, the toolbar, you click on site up here, and that gives you a little drop down menu. And then on the left hand side, you'll have this templates menu. And so what we're going to do is use a template that gives us a nice, it'll pull up this form and give us a nice format for the citation. So I'm going to choose site web. And this pulls up the form. I'm going to put, for the title, I'm going to put glyph. And under the URL, I'm going to paste that URL. And under the publisher, I'm going to put whatis.com, if I'm remembering correctly. I think that's, yeah, whatis.com. Uh, and then for access date, I'm going to click on this little calendar icon, and that will automatically pull in today's date. So now if I insert that, you'll see it put in everything that I've highlighted. So it put in the ref tags automatically, and then it put in this template that's site web. And uh, from the form, it pulled the title, and then it pulled the URL and it pulled the publisher, and it pulled the access date. And now if we, I'm going to say format, formatted citation, and save the page. And now you see we get a much nicer looking citation. So if we had an, it's, it's always good to put in as much information as you can. If you have an author or if you have a date that it was published, uh, it's good to put that information in. I didn't see it from a quick glance at the, at the page, but uh, EJ, if you, if you know that or if you want to take a closer look and find that, uh, that's, that's always good to put in. So, so there's, a, there's a question happening in the, in the talk box here. Um, it's about where you've positioned the number for the citation, whether it should be at the end of the sentence or whether it should be right after the word glyphs, since it's just linking directly to a definition of glyphs. I see. Um, so that is a good question. I, th I think that probably it should be right after the word glyphs. But I'm actually wondering um, if there is a Wikipedia article on glyphs. Because if there is, it might make more sense for this to just be um, an internal link rather than a citation. Because it's not really a citation as in, it's not that we're going to the definition of glyph is not telling us that uh, the flower um, has glyphs. It's just telling us what a glyph is. So it would probably be, it would make more sense just to link this internally to the Wikipedia article on glyphs. So if you were going to do that, um, well, uh, EJ, do you know how to do a um, an internal link? Okay. 
I so um, if we want to do both, I don't think that really hurts anything. But I'm uh, I'm I'm sort of I guess I have my Wikipedian hat on here. I I, I don't think that the reference is is necessary or especially helpful here. If there is an internal definition of what it is, I, I would be more inclined just to link to the Wikipedia article. But um, it doesn't really hurt to to do both. So I will uh, I will not be uh, it's we, we should ignore that. <laughs> Oh, maybe they so Clem, should uh, it's their article. Yeah, exactly. I think they can dig it from yeah, here. Yeah, exactly. I think, I think you guys do it however you like. Um, but I will, I will show you. Actually, there's a, there's a nice little trick because this is plural here because it says glyphs. This gives me a nice opportunity to point something out, which is that if if we go into the the code here and find the word glyphs, well, if we put Double brackets around that, uh, and we do a show preview. This is going to show up, I think, as a red link, meaning that there. Oh well, it didn't. So I guess someone has made a redirect so that uh, it it knows. But if it did, if it showed up as a as a red link, as it usually would for for the plural form, uh, what you can do is just put the double brackets before the s, and the uh, the the software will recognize that what you're trying to do is link that whole word. So it actually, you notice here that the whole word is blue and underlined, including the S. It, it knows to pull the S in and just make the whole word a link, but it's actually linking to um, the just the singular version of it. So that's it's sort of a shorthand way of doing this. So if this is the the standard way where you have first you have the um, the actual target that you're trying to go to, and then you have a vertical bar, and then you have the text that you want to include. But when all you when the only difference is that you have an extra letter or two at the end, you can do that this way. So uh, okay, so we have a question about redirects and disambiguation. Uh, and then actually, I, I see that Clem has a good trick about journals. So uh, I'm going to let, let me just talk briefly about redirects and disambiguation, and then Clem, maybe you can explain that. Um, so redirects and dis disambiguation are are, slight, are different concepts. They're they're related, but they're different concepts. A redirect is um, is a bit of code that you can create on a Wikipedia article or on a Wikipedia article. So let's say um, let's say that this that that um, there was a colloquial name for this flower. Um, let's say it's like pretty pink and white flower. Um, we just make something up that that probably doesn't exist on Wikipedia. So, so let's just let's just assume that that's a uh, sort of a colloquial name for this flower. If I type that into Wikipedia, I don't get anywhere. I get a, it, it comes up as a search, so it, it lists some things that come up with those search, search terms. But I get a red link for the actual article. Now, if I click on pretty pink and white flower, well, I want to make it so that when someone types this in in the future, that it goes directly to this article. So what I would do, and I, I think this may exist. Let's see. Is there a way to do this? Yes. So in this, uh, the advanced menu, there's this, uh, this icon here with the arrow, which will put in the code for a redirect. And you see it's come up and automatically highlighted the place that I need to put in the address. So it's pound symbol, the word redirect in all caps, space, and then double brackets. And then you will put, I'm going to paste in the actual name of this article. And if I save this page, I'm going to demonstrate how a redirect works. Uh, when I've saved it, you'll see that it comes up uh, showing us where it's going to redirect to, and that's because the URL has this little parameter into it in it, and redirect equals no. So it's telling us don't redirect this time. But when we 
when we actually go to the page, I'm going to just paste this into the search box. When someone types it in or when someone clicks on it from another article, it will automatically go to this article and it will have this little line here that tells us that we were redirected from Pretty Pink and White Flower. So, um, <clears throat> so hopefully that explains the concept pretty well and then I'm going to come back to disambiguation which is, uh, a, a, it's a, as I said, it's a closely related concept. I see Christine's already started explaining it here. She says a dis disambiguation page provides links sim to similar or similar sounding articles. Um, so it's sort of a more complex version of a redirect when the redirect may need to go to multiple different places. So uh, one that I know of off the top of my head is OER. So you of often get our, a disambiguation page for, for acronyms. We type in OER, it tells us OER may stand for any of these five or six different things. So this is a, a, a kind of page on Wikipedia. It's not an article. It's meant to help people find the content that they were looking for when it was ambiguous. Um, when, when they typed in something that was ambiguous, we're going to disambiguate it. We're going to uh, get them to the specific thing that they were looking for. So there, there's some guidelines about what these pages should look like. Um, it's not really all that complicated. It, you know, generally speaking, it's going to look something like this. Sometimes you'll get a situation where the term can mean, you know, 20 or 30 different things. In which case, these might be structured a bit. Uh, there might might be places might be listed under a heading, and then people might be listed under another heading. Things like that. Uh, there might be some judgment calls about uh, what do you put first in the list. But for the most part, those are uh, things that can can kind of get sorted out over time. Uh, and you don't need to worry about them more than you want. And oh yes, and Sarah has explained here uh, what I was just showing you with the redirect. When you type in one word and it goes to another, it's because someone has done this. Uh, so it's it really is something that uh, can be. It's very behind the scenes. You don't necessarily know when you're using a redirect, but it's uh, it, it can be very useful. And and this is something that you can. Just even as you're reading Wikipedia, um, if you find yourself searching for someone by, you know, a nickname, if there's someone who's commonly known as Bob, but their Wikipedia article is at Robert, uh, and you know that they're commonly known as Bob, then you can just create a redirect and you can make it a little bit easier for the next person who comes along to get to the article. Uh, there's redirects are, are um, for the most part, no one will ever really object. So you're creating a redirect um, only in a case where there might be disagreement about what it should redirect to, uh, like that there might be multiple different things that could come from a page. But um, but for the most part, more, to re more redirects are better, and most people will agree with that principle. Uh, they, they help readers find the content that they're looking for. So you should feel uh, empowered to make as many of them as you want. So maybe someone can, uh, maybe you guys can think about something where there might be a useful redirect that we could create, um, and maybe we can make a couple more during this lab session if if people come up with ideas. Uh, Peter, um, EJ, yes. do you see do you see the continuing question about about the disambiguation? Sorry, I'm bouncing you back and forth here. Yeah, uh, is that EJ's most recent comment, or do I need to scroll back? It's the new one. Okay. There's an article on Phalaenopsis. How or do I make some connection with our article? Okay. Uh, so. Is this a little like Black Diamond Wikipedia editing? Maybe. I mean, I am not, I don't really know, uh, you know, biological classifications are not my strength. <laughs> so, um, So I see. So you're saying that that the just the word phalaenopsis has its own article. So I am. I, my my guess would be that this is the more general. Uh, okay. So this is the genus I see here in the 
in the info box. And if we go to your article, it's the I see it's the species, so it's within the genus. So, so I guess that's part of an answer is that it's already linked to some degree because it's it's listed here as the genus. Um, you could put in the text that it's uh, you could put in a sentence that says it's of the genus Phalaenopsis. And by the way, if I'm if I'm mangling that pronunciation, I apologize. Um, and you could make that a link to the genus? Does that answer the question? Okay. Good. Uh, so I think it, it really would be excellent to add some more references to this article that really are uh, citations about what the flower is. Uh, I'm going to just do a quick Google search. Uh, and actually, I would go to, uh, let's see, I'm looking for journals, no, let's see, I'm not seeing journals, Google, Google Scholar is, I guess, the, so, okay, let me just go to Scholar. So Google Scholar is a service that collects uh, peer-reviewed journal articles, so if we do a search here, we will find, uh, oh, and I'm going to put it in quotations so that we get articles that specifically mention that in uh, both words in order. And so this might pull up some articles that we could use as citations to expand the article. Um, that would be my, again, uh, you know, biology is really not my field at all. My, in my inclination would be to start with something like this to start pulling in more detailed information and add citations, but um, there may be better ways. Uh, you may you may even want to go to a, a regular library and just start pulling book, books off the shelf, uh, which is fine too. But Clem, I am remembering a little while ago you um, you said that you found a nice trick for adding a journal article with the DOI number. Do you want to tell us about that? Are you if you have a microphone hooked up, maybe you can just jump in and and describe it. You can tell me where to click and I can I can drive while you talk. Okay. So I have a very strange my chat window is doing strange things here, but I am getting it sorted out. I can read you his comment if you want. Okay. If you can't um, see it. No, I can. It's just I have to make my chat window very wide. It's just cutting it off. But now I've I've got it. So as I said previously, not much more to say on the DOI template. Just change the DOI number and paste in the place you want the reference. So. Okay, so if you put this code in and then you put that that number where the space is, uh, it should pull in all of the information. <laughs> Horse and buggy, yes. <laughs> That's a cool trick. I didn't know that trick. Yeah, I hadn't run into that one either. So um, let's see. Let's. I'm gonna just let's let's try this. So let's see if we click on one of these, if it gives us the DOI number. Uh, okay, so there, there it is. No? There it is. I don't know if we want the whole thing or just before the slash. I'm going to just copy the whole thing. Let's go back to our article. And I'm not going to actually, I'm not going to actually save this, but just for the sake of, or maybe I have to save it for it to work, I'm not sure. But I'm going to put in, just at the end here, ref site DOI in a bar and that number. And close the ref tag. 
and I'll show preview. Okay, so I see. So what it does is it, it puts in the DOI number and then it says this citation will automatically be completed in the next few minutes. So this is, as, as you said, Clem, it's a bot that will come by. So it's an automated process on Wikipedia that's watching for when people add this. And then it will come in after the fact and fill in the author and journal information. So that works slightly differently than the form that we just filled in, but uh, I think we can trust that it would work. I'm not going to save this because I don't want to I don't want to mess up the article, but uh, that should be a good thing to experiment with for other articles. So I see Sarah and Trish, you're talking about the <clears throat> the uh, art articles for creation process that I think Kathy used. Uh, and and we can we can talk about that a little bit. Um, yeah, uh, her question. She she noticed. I'm going to go to work. Yep. She noticed that there had been some comments and some feedback on something that had was in another student's sandbox, and she was wondering how did that happen. So I clicked right. on it, and I. Okay, so this is. Yeah, go ahead. Yep. So uh, so Kathy had uh, started an article in our sandbox and then submitted it through this process called Articles for Creation. Uh, and this is something, Articles for Creation is a process where an experienced Wikipedian will review an article and decide whether or not it should be published. It's not, by, it's, it's not required that you go through this process at all. Uh, and for the most part, uh, as Sarah said, I recommend that people skip this process in our class. This is something that's really designed for people who are uh, learning Wikipedia with no guidance at all, and so I think uh, with the guidance that you're getting in this class, for the for the most part, you can you can get the guidance you need from the class, and and it would be redundant to go through this process. But there's not a problem with going through it. What happened with Kathy is that she she submitted it, and I'm going to I'm going to just click on view history so we can see the version of the article that she submitted. Um, let's see, she's done quite a bit of work work here. Uh, I'm really very impressed. Uh, Trish, if you're uh, working closely with her, please pass along. I'm very impressed with, uh, with the work she's done. I told her on her talk page, but um, feel free to tell her again. So I'm going to go back to this version. So Joe Decker is the person who reviewed it. And I'm going to click on the version from May 23rd before he looked at it, just so you get a sense of what she submitted. So uh, as you can see, there's this one paragraph description of FET. And there were there were no citations. There were uh, so and there's this you know idea of two to three paragraphs. So she was clearly she was in the process of constructing the article, uh, and it didn't have any independent sources at all. And so the article in that form was declined. So Okay, Peter, we cannot hear you. I can hear you, Sarah. Can you hear me? I think everyone can hear each other except Peter just went dead. Whoops. <laughs> he's there and he's, you can see the three dots over his microphone, which means he's probably running the uh, audio wizard. It looks to me like that article has um, come a long way since since Joe posted that, I, I suspect it would not be rejected again. I think Pete just got ejected from the room and is going to have to log back in. So this is my favorite part. Uh, yeah, he's coming back already. And yes, I agree. My session died just a minute ago. I had to log out and back on. I agree. It, do, it does look like she's probably done a lot of work on that article. Hi, 
I, I looked at that earlier today, and I looked at some of the sources, and it looks like uh, most of them um, are pretty good. Okay, Pete's back on the call, and he is running his audio wizard now. Okay, can you guys hear me? Yay. Okay, sorry That's about good. that. I'm I'm on a wireless connection today, and it seems to have faded right out. So, uh, but I was I was able to hear you guys a little bit there, and it sounded like you were saying just what I was, which was that Kathy has done a tremendous amount of work since that uh, since she submitted the article. Uh, as you can see now, it has uh, nine different references, uh, a number of different sections. She's put in an info box. So, uh, you know, I, I, the, the comment that I left for Kathy recently is that I'm certainly convinced that this article is ready to be published on Wikipedia. I think I suggested to her a couple of things that she could do to make the case even stronger so that, uh, you know, even someone who's maybe more skeptical or less forgiving than myself uh, might, might be convinced. Um, I don't think it's it's absolutely necessary that you do that, but it can be, especially once you've already been through a request to have it go through articles for creation and had it, have it, had it declined, it's a good idea to really make the strongest case that you can uh, for notability uh, before trying again. So, um, did you did you actually at some point explain to people what that process is? Because we are we are, we are still getting some questions about it. Yeah, well, no, I, I haven't. Uh, and the reason I haven't is because I, I really don't recommend it uh, to people in this class. It's, I, 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 could, I could show you. I could take the time to do that. But I think that would just be learning a skill. I think that would just be busy work for those of you in the class. I think that you're all learning enough about how to just directly create an article um, that I, w I would advise you to skip the article for creation process. And actually, it's well, you might be, I'm imagining that some of you might be tempted to use it because it gives you a little bit of feedback when someone reviews your article, but there are better ways to get feedback. Um, if you use the article, articles for creation process, the, the people who are doing those reviews are very used to having a lot of junk submitted, and they're, they're very much in a mindset of, um, of sort of looking for reasons to tell people that their article can't be published. Uh, and they're not necessarily doing a, a, a really a deep reading. But there, if, if you can find, uh, I think generally speaking, a wiki project that's related to the article is the best place to go because you're going to find people that are interested in that subject area. Uh, and when they review the article, they're going to be much more interested in the substance of what you've written um, and probably give you more valuable feedback. So in a case like the article we were just looking at, um, I'm going to go back to the article here. Um, so I don't know if this is already in a wiki project. It is. So this is in wiki project plants and wiki project uh, Tambayan Philippines. So two places that you could go to seek some input would be these wiki projects. If you just click on the bold text for the wiki project itself, um, that takes you to the main wiki project page. And then the talk, the talk page is typically really where all the action is at in a wiki project. So if you click on the talk page, here you see a, a whole lot of discussion. So I'm going to just, when, when I look at a wiki project or an article for that matter, I always try to look and like scan the dates first to get a sense of how active it is. So here I'm seeing uh, this is the oldest comment that's on the main talk page is from April of 2013. Uh, and if we scroll down, we're seeing some more Aprils. So this is good. This looks like an active wiki project. There are lots and lots and lots of comments uh, just from within the last couple of months. So I would just click on New Section at the top. And for the subject or headline, I would probably put, oops, I just pasted the wrong thing, but I would, I would put in the title of the article. and. And I would probably put it within double brackets so that the reader can click on it and see the article. And you might just say, I'm new to Wikipedia and have been working on 
put the title of the article. I'd appreciate any feedback or input. And then you can sign your name. What you do with the four squiggly marks or just by clicking on this signature icon here, which will automatically put that in and save the page. And so that would create the comment at the bottom of the talk page. And, and then you also might want to put this uh, wiki projects talk page on your watch list, which you do by clicking the star here. Uh, and then when you click on the watch list, you'll be able to see uh, in order when people have uh, added a new comment there. So that will make it a little easier to find when someone responds. Typically, they'll respond there on the wiki project page. It's possible that they might click through and leave you a message on your own user talk page, but more commonly, they'll, they'll keep it on the wiki project page. Uh, or they might go to the article talk page uh, and leave a comment there. So here on the Philonopsis hieroglyphica talk page. So okay, so um, how's that? Any any follow-up questions I've missed as I've been rambling on here? I don't think so, although it looks like Christine may have her hand up. So oh, okay. Christine, what what do you have for us? Hi there. Uh, I, I missed you guys on Tuesday. Um, Thanks. I, I just had a, a really general question uh, about um, the history and possible evolution of the placement of these editorial tags that we've become familiar with, the tops of articles which aren't perfect yet. Mm -hmm. It seems mm -hmm. to me like that served an important purpose when Wikipedia was sort of getting its legs. Um, and was trying to encourage people to get involved. Mm -hmm. um, but have, are you familiar with, with any discussions in the community about, about putting those tags on the talk page instead of at the top of the article where you know, new users experience them as kind of a, a, a draconian slap in the face? or that they, It just seems way too prominent. For that, or, or why are they at the top instead of the bottom if they need to be in the article? So that was my question. Yeah, it's um, it's a good question, and I, I don't I, I, I can I can talk a little bit about it. I don't know if, if I have a uh, an answer that's going to be really satisfying, but I can give a little bit of context to that. Um, you do have so this is a, the the kind of banner you're talking about. Typically, there's a, a colored bar at the top. Uh, in this case, it's a pretty innocuous one. Uh, it's been suggested that this other article be merged into the article. Um, but in a lot of cases, it'll say this article is written like an advertisement, or this article doesn't have enough external references, or something like that, um, which certainly can come across as a slap in the face to uh, if you're a, a new contributor and trying to give an article your best shot. Uh, you might prefer that someone give more specific suggestions about how the article can be improved or just work to improve it instead of slapping a big tag at the top of it. Um, so a couple of points related to that. One is that I think all of these tags, uh, and here I'll, I'll show you the um, I'll show you the code that puts the tag in. You can see at the at the top of the article, it's 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 generally it's a template. So here it is merge from, and then there's some parameters that tell you what what article is suggested to merge, and then there's a link to where the discussion is going on. So most of these banners will have something at the end that says discuss, that it will encourage you to discuss it. And best practice is that when someone puts a tag on an article, they should leave a corresponding note on the talk page. So um, it's, 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 it's kind of considered impolite to just slap a tag on that says this article reads like an advertisement and not also go to the talk page and start a section that says something like, um, you know, maybe the title would be reads like an 
and then you know leave some comments that say uh, you know there are too many uh, glowing adjectives and too much discussion of uh, I don't I don't know I mean I'm you know I'm making this up but uh, but typically if someone if if someone's going to make that judgment about the article they should explain it and they should explicitly open it up for discussion. It's, it, it frequently doesn't happen, but it's always fair to criticize someone for this. If someone just leaves that, that banner at the top of the article and you don't understand why, um, you're, it's, 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 it's perfectly acceptable to say, hey, uh, give me some more guidance here. And if you can't, I think we should take the, the banner off. If you, if, you can't, if you can't be bothered to even explain why you think it should be there, I'm going to just take it off. So. Um, in that sense, uh, it's you know there's 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 nothing in Wikipedia policy that will prevent people from being a bit rude or dismissive sometimes with these, but uh, but when they are, it's you're, you you often have a good um, you know a good opportunity to to request further input or request that the banner be removed or just remove the banner yourself. Uh, and and one other point um, before I'm uh, is, is is that the banners actually can be within sections in the article, um, and in some cases, that uh, especially ones that have to do with citations. Um, sometimes, let's see. I think this is one that I. Yeah, I, I have seen that, and, and that makes a little more sense. But I, I think so there was also. Yeah. Ex exactly. And they can even be sometimes, uh, like if it's specifically about references, sometimes uh, what I've seen and what I think can be a much uh, nicer way to go about it is if, if an article seems a little bit thin on references, but it does have some, uh, is just to put the references tag within the references section. So. I believe the references is the one that will put that banner in. And so you can actually put it within the notes or the, the references section. So, uh, well, okay, so this is probably not the right one, but th this one says this article does not cite any references or sources. But there's another one, I forget exactly what the name of it is, but uh, there's another one that says this article doesn't have enough references. So if that's the case, I would typically put that in the references section instead of at the top of the article. So, I, Christine, I know that's not quite what you asked. I, I guess, I guess the, the straight answer to what you asked is no. I, I don't know of any um, effort to uh, sharply reduce or eliminate them being on the articles themselves. Uh, and I, I, I understand the reasons why you think that would be a good idea, but I think it would be a bit difficult to, uh, to kind of push through in the in the Wikipedia community these days. I think it's something that's that's pretty strongly ingrained. And I think there's a there's there's certainly places where the banners can be sort of offensive, but there are other places where I think most Wikipedians would agree and and I would agree that um, that the banners serve a useful purpose where uh, if if the article truly does have major issues, but there are issues that can't be Easily solved with, you know, five minutes of work. They, it would act, it would really take kind of a deep reading by someone with uh, with some expertise in the topic and some time to sort through it. Um, a banner can be a much better way to address that than nothing at all on the article, and can help the reader um, quickly come to that realization that the article has some important shortcomings. Thank you. Peter, I wanted to, um, a couple of quick things. One short question just came up, which I think would be useful um, in this context. Also, earlier, Cami had, had posted a rather long question. And I've got it on my okay. clipboard. And I can repost it for you if you want to look at it. Um, and more recently, Johnny Tecmo's hand is up. <laughs> OK. So I'm just bringing you up to speed. The, the the quick question was how do you watch an article and what does that mean? Oh yes. Um, so the way that you watch an article, 
is, and I'll just click on a random one here on the front page. Uh, so 2013 European floods. If I wanted to watch this article, I would just click on this star. So if the star is blue, that means it's on my watch list. If you click it again, that takes it off your watch list. Uh, and then once it's on your watch list, the way that you watch it is by clicking watch list in the upper right hand corner. So this is much like the article history screen that we've looked at before. It has, you'll, you'll see a lot of similarities. But um, what you're seeing is a list of different articles in reverse chronological order. Uh, and links to the most recent changes. So if you click on diff at the left, that's going to show you the difference between the most recent version and the version immediately before that. Can so I have mine set up so that I get an email every time anything on my watch yeah. list changes? That is an excellent feature. So that you can, if you go into your preferences, there is a heading for watch list. And that option you're talking about is, where is it, where is it? I don't even remember setting it. I, I think I thought it was default. Maybe it's, it, it may be default. Um, but anyway, it's relevant to this conversation because it, it means that you can follow discussions like, uh, you know, should this, tag be removed quite easily without having to actively do anything. And you would be notified if a tag were added to one of right. your articles right. and so forth. So it's like a really great way to, to pull it all yep. together in one place. Yep. Do yeah, you know, I think, um, you know, maybe the most important. Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just going to ask also, um, I hadn't noticed yet whether, um, I think when you watch an article, you, you are also automatically then watching the talk page. Yeah, I yes, think that's, that's correct. true. Yes. Yeah, it automatically ties the two together. So, um, and, and I, I think it's worth pointing out here, uh, it's, this really is something I, I should have talked about watch lists uh, much earlier in the course because uh, typically this is your first stop. When you log into Wikipedia, um, if you're working on more than one or two articles, the first thing that you're going to want to do is go to your watch list, and that's going to show you all the changes uh, to all of the articles that you've chosen to watch. Um, also, uh, there, there's also a setting in the preferences, which I think is on by default, uh, which automatically adds every article that you create or edit to your watch list. And especially when you're first starting out with Wikipedia, it's a good idea to have that option enabled. Uh, yeah, this is down here. So we're in the watch list tab of preferences and add pages and files I edit to my watch list, add pages and files I move to my watch list, add pages I create and files I upload to my watch list. So uh, those are good settings to have. Once, if you, if you really become very active on Wikipedia and you're correcting typos uh, on, you know, dozens or hundreds of pages, it can get a little annoying to do that, so you might eventually want to turn that off. Um, but it's, uh, it's, it's a good option in many cases. W once your watch list starts to get big, um, if you want to, uh, to trim it, there are two options for doing that. So if you click on your watch list, you'll see, oh, it's, it's worth pointing out there, there are notifications that will show up sometimes just on your watch list page. They might not show up uh, anywhere else. They're sort of intended uh, specifically for people who are actively editing Wikipedia. So this, here's an example. The, the Great American Wicknick is coming up. Uh, and if you're, if you're in the US, uh, especially if you're near a major city, there's probably a Wicknick going on near you. And if there's not, you are encouraged to, to, uh, to throw one, so just choose a park uh, somewhere in your neighborhood and put up a wiki page and hopefully other people will come along and want to join your picnic. Um, so that kind of announcement will show up on your watch list. And then if you want to edit your watch list, let's see, why am I not seeing this right now? I, sometimes I tend to go blind at the end of these hours. Oh yeah, okay, so view and edit watch list or edit raw watch list. So if you edit raw watch list, that will just pull up your whole 
watch list in a text field, and you can just delete um, different articles, or you can type in the names of articles. Uh, so that's one way to do it. Or if you click View and Edit Watch List, it'll it'll it's similar, but it'll come up in this checkbox format, so that you can um, so that you can uh, check off ones that you want to remove, and then go down to the bottom and remove titles. And this also keeps it separated out by user pages and Wikipedia pages and articles, uh, so according to namespace. So there was a more complicated question. Oh yes, red, uh, EJ. Yes, red always means that a that a page does not exist. So uh, in in this case, these are two pages that I have I have added these pages to my watch list, even though they, they actually have never existed. But I am interested to know if they ever do get created, or if someone uh, yeah if someone creates them, or if someone starts developing them. So you can actually type in. Uh, so I'm going to just type in blah, 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 and I'm going to click on the red link there. So I'm now at the page that would exist. Well, it, apparently it has existed and it's been deleted. Um, but now that I'm here, you see it's a red link and there is no article here. Uh, I could type in here and I could create the article, but also uh, if I want to add it to my watch list, I can do that even though it doesn't exist. So I see a question from from Melissa or Melise, uh, but uh, Sarah, you had I, I think you had another question queued up, so I don't want to get out of order. Yeah, John, Johnny Techmo. Well, okay, actually, the the one I had queued up was Cami. It was okay. before Johnny had his hand up. So what's happening is we are timing out. So it is time yep. to start reminding people they can always post their questions on the talk page. But um, and I don't know if Pete has a few minutes too. But I just I just copied and pasted the long one again. It's just a little okay. bit complicated. It, it okay, so this easy. is I, I am seeing it. The if there's time, I'd like to receive feedback. Okay, so this is the Molcajete article introduced last week, and another is the alternative educator writer Herbert Cole. It's a familiar name. It lacks many citations because it appears a publicist uploaded an authorized unsighted bio onto Wikipedia. I added three. Okay. So um, so this is so just because someone has added a flag to an article doesn't mean that they're paying attention to see if new citations get added. So if you feel that you've addressed a concern like that, you're more than welcome to remove that tag yourself. Um, I'm going to just take a quick look. Herbert Cole, educator. So here we have needs additional citations for ver verification, and it tells us it was tagged in February 2012. Scroll to the bottom. So it does have eight citations, and uh, apparently, Cami, you added three of these. Um, so that is a, it's a reasonable number of citations. I would, I'm not going to express a strong opinion here without reading through the article. Of course, it's important that uh, that the major points in the article have citations. It certainly looks like there are a number of paragraphs that have no citations at all. So it could still be that there's a significant issue here. Um, but if you feel that it has enough citations now, you can certainly go in, edit the article, and remove that banner. I would be sure to leave a clear, so this is ref improve, that's the name of the banner I was trying to remember before uh, that says this needs more citations as opposed to this doesn't have any at all. So you could just delete that and leave an edit summary that explains why you're deleting it. Or another thing you could do is, as we discussed before, you could just take it, you could cut it out where it is and go down to the references section and you could paste it in there, and you still might leave uh, an edit summary that says uh, references have been added, more should be 
but I am moving the tag down to make it less prominent. <laughs> so references have been added, more should be added, but I'm moving the tag down to make it less prominent. So, you know, anything it's 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 uh it's up to you what you'd like to do with this. If someone disagrees with you, they might bring it up on the talk page. You might find yourself in a bit of a discussion about it. But um uh, but you should you should definitely go with your own judgment as as to what you think is important is uh the appropriate thing to do here. So uh, I do have, uh, I can probably stick around another five minutes or so uh, if, if we have any other quick questions uh, we want to take right now. Uh, otherwise, yes, please do uh, use the, the class discussion page and uh, I will answer questions there. I'm glad to see so many excellent questions coming up. It's, uh, it's, I can tell that you guys are getting into much more interesting things now. So keep up the good work. Okay, so we're having a little difficulty, people are having a little difficulty in adding their articles. Uh, I'm going to just go to our page here. So, oh, I see uh, uh, several people have added them though. This is good. Uh, I, I'm seeing a couple of new ones since the last time I looked. Um, so uh, yes, as Christine said, it's it's essential that you're logged in when you go to this. And once you are next to your own name, you should see this box where you can type in the name of an article. Um, you can type in that name, and it will it'll autofill. It'll it'll try to predict the name that you're putting in. Um, so it is important to type it in exactly how it's entered on Wikipedia, and then click. Add an article, and it should just show up in the list as soon as you've done that. So as you can see here, it, it got added. Um, but if you're having difficulty with that, feel free to ask for help. And if you're really having difficulty, it's possible we won't be able to help you. Uh, but that's not something to worry about. So it's 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 going to make it easier for us to help you and review your work. If you do add your article here, but if you don't add your article, it is not, it is not really a problem. Uh, we will be able to, um, we'll still be able to review your, your content. So um, don't, uh, don't worry too much about it if, if you have trouble. Also, the other issue would be people do need to be registered in the class technically here on the site. That's right. That's right. Yeah, so if you're, so you do have, in order to even have your name in this, this list, uh, you have to enroll on the course page, and you can do that, uh, if you haven't done it yet, by either clicking enroll, the enroll button here, or, uh, at the, the top of our course page, there's also a button for enroll that, that'll take you to the same place. And once you do that, you'll need to enter a token, which is just wiki SOO, wiki Sue. Uh, and click enroll with this token. So that will that will put your name into the list and hopefully allow you to put your article in. But this is a, a new experimental platform that Wikipedia is trying out, and there there have been a few bugs. So. That's right. So yeah, we've we've had a people have had trouble. Oh yes, Christine, that's a good point. If you, uh, yeah, you just need to type the name of the article itself, not in brackets, as you would typically do in an article to make it link. You would put it within brackets, but I don't think that will. I think that would mess it up in this case. Just guessing. Yeah, it didn't work when I tried to do it in brackets. Okay, so I am. Uh, I, I I think we're done. I'm not seeing. There was a question from Jay Roxy Chicks about whether she could uh, do a foreign language article for her main project, Spanish. Oh yes, yeah. Thanks for uh, yes. That is absolutely fine. Um, it is. Uh, I I don't 
speak very much Spanish, but uh, I should be able to review your, you know, to, to review your content in a general way and, uh, and you know, assess that you've done the work. Uh, and also, I can probably help reach out to some native Spanish speakers who might be able to do more detailed review as well. So um, you're more than work welcome to work on foreign language Wikipedia. Um, you're just, uh, it's, it's just that we might not be able to give you quite as much feedback. But we'll try. We'll do the best we can. Okay. So uh, we will see you all on Tuesday. Thank you very much for coming today. And uh, in the meantime, of course, if you have questions, add them to the class discussion page. There have been uh, more questions there recently. And also, uh, please add that class discussion page to your watch list and try to come and if you see a question from someone else that you know how to answer, uh, please feel free to jump in and do that. Uh, as, as we go along and various people learn things uh, before other people, uh, it's, it's, it's really, it's excellent if, if you guys can start answering each other's questions. Um, I think often you learn just as much from answering someone else's question as from hearing an answer. So I encourage you to do that. And I think we're done. So we'll see you Tuesday. Thank you all. This was great. Bye. Bye-bye. Oh, thanks for that link, Clem. <laughs>